And you heard me share before that to get an agreement with God that even if there are challenges, I never say it's a bad day. But in reality, it was a challenging week. And I woke up really burdened the other day. And so I called my prayer partner, Nina. And I said, can we talk and pray? And we did. Then the next morning, I woke up and all these cares and concerns hit me. But being the kind of person that I am, I said, okay, Lord, am I going to just, is this just mouth service or is this real? And so out of me rose, I am able in all things. The power in the Messiah has empowered me. But we are not of the quitting kind. We have a persuasion of souls that believes against all odds. You will keep me in shalom, shalom, because my mind is stayed on you. And immediately after I said that, God spoke to me this phrase. And he said, and he was talking to me, but I'll share it with all of us. Are we living in fear, being moved and shaken by every external challenge, or are we centered from within, resting in the love of God? The title of today's message is Living from Within. I had a choice in that moment. But what was in me rose out of me. That's why I encourage you all to meditate on those verses or whatever God's speaking to your heart. That rose out of me. I am able in all things. The power in the Messiah has empowered me. That's where I was at and that's where I am. And I've been doing some personal study. Let's put this next slide up. And this is kind of interesting, but here's the reality of it, saints. Every thought word and action is based on love or fear, nothing else. Say that with me. Every thought, word, and action is based on love or fear, nothing else. Nothing else. Do you know our brains express only two basic emotions, what, what we just said, love or fear. From these two all other emotions are experienced. Fear weakens and disables and shakes us. When we live in fear, we react instead of responding appropriately. But love strengthens, love empowers. When we love, we are reflecting who God is within us and our true selves. See, God doesn't just have love. God is love. And because God is love, we are love. Think about that for a second. Francois Dutoin, his book, God Believes in You, we had a great time with that study. It was amazing. We took a long time. In chapter 8, he talks about, it's a chapter talking about love dispelling fear. And he says this, your life can be inspired by love or ruled by fear. And he says, fear is not a force itself. It is merely the unawareness of love. Did you know that? Before I go on, I want to share something that uh, I read this week. And I thought, wow. There was this man who's made it his quest to walk in love. And a burglar comes in his house. And when he sees the burglar, the burglar's about to run away. And he goes, no, 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 stop. Stay here a second. Let's talk. And the burglar looks at him like, oh, OK. This is a true story. So. He talks to the burglar and he says, what's happened to you to bring you to this place? And the burglar told him, I lost my job and I'm having all these problems. And he went on and on and he was talking to him. And by the time they were done, this man who he was going to rob chose to give him some money and say, and I think he prayed with him. And he said, you know, if you ever want to talk some more, I'm here. The system that we live in does not operate in that love realm. But we are of another kingdom, saints. Fearless. I'm not always reflecting that, but that's my desire to be fearless. 
Francois said, we give experiences, circumstances, rumors, or people power over us by the way we perceive and respond to them. Now, there's nothing wrong if someone chose to call the police and do all the legal and lawful things. Please, I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the moment, this person was led by the Spirit of God to say, stop. And there was a genuine encounter with the love of God for that man. Didn't Jesus say, turn the other cheek? That's what this person did. He was going to rob him, and the owner of the home said, here, I want to give you this. I think our own, someone in our own congregation once, there was someone, I remember this, I don't want to say who it is now, but it's, it was cute. There was someone who was passing through, they were in their complex, and I think they fed them. <laughs> they fed them. And I thought, wow. Wow. Every thought, word, and action is based on love or fear, nothing else. Well, where are we living from? If we are love and God's within us and he's love, isn't that the place we should be living from? But sometimes we're afraid of the reaction of others, and that may stop us, and that's so egoistic. But I want to share a story. This is so fun. There's an author named Liberty Savard, and she wrote this book called Breaking the Power. And she said when she was younger, in her youth, she was kind of, a rough character, but then when she gave her heart to God, she was just so excited, and she wanted to bless her parents by um, giving her parents a 50th anniversary party, okay? So she prayed, and she said, Lord, I want to be a light to all the people around because, you know, they haven't seen me for so long, and I just want them to see you, okay? She thought it would be great to show her family and friends how she had become an amazing woman of God. Okay, so here's what happens. She lived an hour away from the party. She got ready in plenty of time. One last spray to her hair to set it, and she would be off. Except she grabbed bug spray from under her sink instead of the hairspray. <laughs> Quickly, she showered again. There's no time to do her hair now. She hopped in her car, and it wasn't long before she realized that the car was overheating. She turned off the air conditioner, but still something was wrong. She had to keep adding transmission fluid every few miles. She got to the party a little late, frizzy hair, oily hands, and a red face. So she decided she'd take a few moments to freshen up. Well, there was another problem. In the heat, her large jar of face cream had exploded all over everything in her overnight bag, including her makeup, her hairbrush, and her hairspray, which were all covered now in white goop. So what do you think she did? Well, her only option, she felt, was to go out and enjoy the party. Yeah. There was nothing else she could do. She determined to have a great time and laugh anyway. Amen. Later, she told God that she had covered the day with prayer, and it felt like everything had gone wrong. She wanted to make such a good impression. But she felt God tell her this. Most of your family and friends remember how angry you used to be. They may never hear your testimony, but they saw living proof today of my power to change a life by the way you handle this situation with humor and grace. Now, I thought that was powerful. She had a choice. She could allow fear of what others would think of her and what she looked like to stop her from going to the party, to stop her from being a blessing, but she chose love. She loved God so much. She loved these people so much. She wanted them to see what God had done. She chose to live from within her true, authentic self. Since we at Oasis believe in keeping it real, I'm going to share about myself this week. Y'all know that DJ and I go to our IS ICFM meetings, which are the meetings with um, our friends... The Tim, Tim and Marsha Greenwood. And I had it on my fridge for the longest. Talk about fear. S about a year ago, I shared some nutritional tips with them, and they loved them, and it was wonderful. Now, a year later, because of some changes in my body, I'm 10 pounds heavier. And would you believe I almost didn't go? Because I thought, oh, what are they going to think? 
Here I am, the nutrition coach. How can I go when I've gained 10 pounds? And suddenly I was going down an egoistic, fear-based path. And I didn't tell anyone, except when I read this, God said to share it with you all, because maybe that'll encourage you guys. Because pastors are people too. And I kept looking at that fridge, and I thought, no, I've got to go. This isn't about me. When I go, I get to receive. I get to hug people who I love. I get to fellowship with my brothers and sisters. And you know what? I went in faith. And even though me and myself gained 10 pounds, which we're working on, and no one's going to throw me out going, oh, look at you. Right? It's just in my head. I'm just the same size, just a tad bigger. <laughs> Regardless, it doesn't matter. But I got to fellowship. And one of the people asked me, they said, oh, You've done a seminar for us before. We'd like to have you come again. I'm like, and then I had to laugh and sigh. I go, wow. What if I gave in to fear? What if I gave in to that egoistic self that was so self-centered, all about me? And the person who ministered was a joy. I loved his spirit. He's a pastor in Azusa with a little congregation. He loves God. He loves people. He was ministering some really awesome things on leadership. He's just a blessing. And I'm like, and then I got to sew into him, and I got to hug people. And then one of the greatest things happened. There's a couple there. He's a really big, tall guy. And uh, I had shared a, a request. I was asking them to stand with us at Oasis because we're standing August, because we're just always standing financially thanking God for what he's doing. And I wanted them to be in agreement. And I asked for prayer for Joni and other people at other prayer requests. And we prayed for DJ. Kept it simple. Afterwards, when no one else was looking, he said, what's the name of your church? I said, Oasis of the Valley. And he sowed a good seed into our church. All because I chose to live from within and go. And then afterward, his wife, who's really precious, she looks like she'd be Leoma's sister, I'm telling you. And I think she's just a year older. So... Um, afterwards, I was talking with him because he told me, he goes, hey, do you know that I lost 50 pounds now? I said, oh, oh, my gosh, because when I shared, I was sharing some things, some health tips and different things. You know, the Bible said, you know, the word goes forth, any word. It could be a positive God word, it goes forth, and it's like folks are catching things. And then afterwards, he was doing something else. Well, first, I prayed a blessing over him when he handed this to me. I didn't even look at it till later going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, thank you, Lord. Oh, my gosh, I was just so overwhelmed with God's goodness. And I prayed a blessing on them, and then God showed me some things for them. And then he was doing something else, and his wife told me. She said, you know one of the reasons we come here? And I said, no, why? She said, he wants to see you. And I'm, I'm, I'm just over, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away again. You see, if we would, none of these are on the notes. That's why I don't have notes, Harley. When we would just get out of ourselves and our self-centeredness and our egoistic way and say, God, it's all about you as we sung. I give everything to you. We sung that. When we do that, oh, what God can do. And I'm not talking about, oh, good, next time go to a meeting expecting to get a check. That wasn't even in the works. The thing was, I was able to sow. I was able to give. And DJ and I were able to receive some things as well. And it was so neat seeing our brothers and sisters. There's so many, there's so many awesome people. I love people. I love animals, y'all. But I love, love, love people. And I almost missed an opportunity just because I was thinking about me. The gal here could have missed the opportunity. But she says, no, it doesn't matter what I look like. This is for my family. And in the midst of it, God spoke to her. I'm doing it another way. Now, I'm not saying God caused all those horrible things to happen, but can't God turn all things around? And he did, and she went anyway. And her family and friends got to see, this isn't the same person. She used to be angry about stuff. She's not angry anymore. I can almost hear Gareth saying, chill out, yeah. you know. <laughs> Lighten up, no worries. But see... We could get shaken. Years ago, I talked about being shaken. Fear causes us to be shaken, whether it's something we're afraid of externally out there or how people will think about us or what they will say. Well, what did, what did Paul say? Put up this next slide, please. Okay, he's in prison. Now, folks could have been thinking whatever they've been thinking, but look how Francois in the Mirror Study Bible translated this. This is Paul talking. 
The fact that I'm in prison does not in the least diminish my awareness of my in Christness. My complete existence is defined and confined in Him. Let the detail of your day to day life flow from the consciousness of your true identity and worth as defined in Him. Now, if you don't know what your worth is, get a hold of Dr. John's Awesome Beyond Awesome Beyond Awesome Beyond Awesome ministry last week, where we see clearly the prodigal son as representation of the father and how he really feels, and then God's not beating him up and he's not beating us up. Amen. Zephaniah 3.17 in the Amplified says, The Lord your God in the midst of you. Other translations say in the middle of you, which I really like. In the middle of you is a mighty one, a savior who saves. That word means saves, he delivers, he does it all, amen? He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction. And in his love, he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exult over you with singing. God's not condemning us or shaming us or blaming us or anything else. And yet we do that to ourselves, or we think other people are going to do us and we already put on them how they're going to think about us. And no one even looked at me and said, oh, it looks like, Karen, you've gained 10 pounds. You can't be a nutrition coach anymore. No one did that. I have to be honest, okay? And yes, I'm working on things. And it's not just about 10 pounds, about gaining muscle and gaining health. So whatever. The point is, the point is, though, we put these things on ourselves. We don't socialize. We don't, we don't share our faith, whether it's in a practical way or taught, telling them Jesus loves them. Some folks are afraid to even pray over their meal in public. Just love God. Amen. Just reflect him. Just be real. Just live from within. That's what we're talking about today. We are in him. He is in us. Acts 17, 28 says in him we live and move and have our being. And it goes on and says we are his offspring. We are his children. So he's in us and we're in him. He is love. We are love. Our true nature is love and not fear. So fear is really foreign to us. And yet we slip into it so easy. And I say we because I showed, told you what I just did, right? And here's something else he told me on Saturday morning. He says, you see, when we rest in his love, then we experience peace that passes understanding because the realm of the spirit supersedes the realm of the flesh. In that place of peace, we hear without static and we find clarity and direction. You see, recently I told you, I believe there's a real connection when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and it goes on. So what happened to this gal? She chose love. She was at peace. She was experiencing joy. And not that we're sitting there making this little slot, okay, now I'm in love, now I'm in joy. No, I just believe that we are, when we are in our real identity of love, then the rest of it just flows out naturally. Paul was the one who went through beyond challenges, and he's the one who says nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. That may have been his meditation because of all the stuff he was going through. Who knows? It wasn't like he walked on water all the time. Peter did for a little bit, but, but look at this verse again, because this is the only slide I got for y'all. Read it with me. The fact that I am in prison does not in the least diminish my awareness of my in Christness. My complete existence is defined and confined in Him. Let the detail of your day to day life flow from the consciousness of your true identity and worth as defined in Him. When we're in that place of love, then we can experience that peace I just said. And in Colossians 3.15, it talks about that peace being the umpire of our soul. Another translation says that's where Christ gives settle to all questionings in our heart. So it doesn't mean we have all the answers always. But if we're living from within, actually it does, forgive me, Lord, we have all the answers, we just don't know them yet. We're living from within, and if we are settled in that peace, and we're settled in that love, and we're settled in that rest, resting in God's love for us, then the answers will manifest. John 14, 27, Jesus gave his disciples peace, he said, but not as the world gives. The world's peace is based upon everything being perfect. I don't know about you, but I, my life is fluid. It's not always perfect. 
And in the midst of this fluidity, we have a choice to make. Are we in faith and love? Are we in fear? Andrew, put that other slide back up again. I just want that to just remain there the rest of the time. The second one. Not like I have so many today. But if we would realize that, because DJ used to always tell me this. He used to say, where's that fear coming from? I'd say, oh, it's not fear, it's just this. Boy, was I in denial. So now, consciously being aware of this, okay, Lord, where's that coming from? Am I moving in love or am I taking on this identity of fear that's not me anymore? And that's what we need to ask ourselves. Alan Cohen said this, upset is a lens we choose to filter experiences. Um, Try it again. Upset is a lens we choose to filter experiences. We participate in what disturbs us. The ego's world is built on grievances so it can and will use every little thing it sees as grounds for grievance. It believes that whining is winning while it's really losing. So we have the choice to make, don't we? And he says this, he continues on. Ultimately, there is only one real miracle. The shift and awareness from the tyranny of fear to the healing presence of love. Now, isn't that powerful? I thought it was so simple. I mean, we, you know, I think we knew this years ago, and then we got... It's like we knew it was love, and then folks kept handing us rules, and now we're carrying all this other stuff that it's not. And if we would get back to the basics, we'll just do the other stuff out of just flowing with God. We'll just do it. Praise God. The new Mirror Bible is out, by the way, and he now has revelation in it. But I want to read one verse to you, and I'm sure I shared this before, but I love this verse about God's love. If you ever want to just, one day I think I told you I was just sitting there and I distracted myself in a good way and I just began to read 1 John and I couldn't put it down because it's all about God's love. Verses 16 through 19. 1 John 4. And thus we have come to know and believe the love God has unveiled within us. We're talking about living from within. God is love. Love is who God is. To live in this place of conscious, constant love is to live immense in God and to feel perfectly at home in his indwelling. Ah, doesn't that feel like, ah, can't you just feel like yourself sinking in that? So now, with us awakening to our full inclusion in this love union, everything is perfect. Its completeness is not compromised in contradiction. Our confident conversation echoes this fellowship even in the face of crisis. <gasps> Wait, you mean stuff's still going to happen? Yeah. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Our lives are mirrored in him. Well, how was he? Did he just wring his hands going, oh, no, I don't know what to do. She's sick. God, what are we going to do with this? Or look at those disciples you gave me. Was he doing all that? No, he wasn't moved by that. He either proclaimed some things or prayed over folks or ministered in their lives. He destroyed the works of the evil one, the wicked one, the devil, the deceptor, by all that he did, and that's how we are. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Our lives are mirrored in him. We are as blameless in this life as Jesus is. Blameless. No condemnation. No shame. No guilt. This perfect love union is the source of our confidence whenever we face a scrutiny of contradiction. Verse 18, fear cannot coexist in this love realm. Cannot. The perfect love union that we are talking about expels fear. Some say covers, but I say, and Francois says, expels. That means to get rid of. It's no longer there. Fear holds on to an expectation of crisis. Aha! So it's a thing of what we think is going to happen. It was what I thought was going to happen when I went to the meeting. It's the lady's opportunity. It's if she was going down that road, but she didn't, right? Fear holds on to an expectation of crisis and judgment, which brings separation, and interprets it as due punishment, a form of karma. It echoes torment and only registers in someone who does not realize the comp completeness of their love union. Why do we talk about love so much here? Because if we really know who we are and we're really resting in God's love and his love for us, 
then we will manifest that always and love everyone with God's love. We will not see anyone with judgment or condemnation. We will see them as God sees them. And when people come in contact with that perfect love, it's love that makes the difference. We love because he first loved us. And then he goes on talking about loving our brothers and sisters. So every thought, word, and action is based on love or fear. Every. So I want to challenge you today, as God challenged me, and ask yourself, say, self, am I living in fear? Being moved and shaken by every external challenge? Or am I centered from within? Resting in the love of God. My heart for Oasis is that we really be our mission and our vision. We are a refreshing oasis of love and encouragement. We value love and people and restoration and worship, and there's so much in that. And that's what I desire. And that's what God desires, that we truly live from within, from the real us, from who we really are. I told on myself to break its power because if I don't fear, then I'm not going to be afraid of what you guys will think of me either. I just said, I'm going to tell on myself, but that's how I was feeling. You see, we can, let, we can let things slip, but that's not the real us. The real us, God says, is to live from within, to live from that place of love, to live from that place of love. So I thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Father, that love dispels and expels fear. I thank you, Lord, that we choose to live from within. We choose to reflect you and your love. And we thank you, Lord, where fear is not, ego is not. It just, it's not a part of us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that regardless of what we face this week, we will not be shaken, but we are resting in your love, living from within. In Jesus' name, amen.